uh, workforce development for higher learning. And as you know, Dr. Andrew Sung, as the president of San Agustin College, and as an educator, uh, a legislator, has uh, really taken this private college. It was, is the premier college uh, for these uh, for this path. And going forward, I realized that this morning as I move forward in my life, Dr. Andrew Sung. Well, uh, good morning, everybody, and, and uh, thank you for being here. And I am also particularly happy and humbled of being here because uh, I do have a little uh, history with just about everybody on this panel. <laughs> also, uh, as Julio mentioned, we're very proud of some of the work we do with him at St. Augustine College that uh, we believe is very innovative. And that's a different panel someday that yeah. Yeah. we can talk about that because it's not, not that much related to health. <laughs> And Juan and I, of course, we've known each other for a long time, and I'm always very proud to say, for those of you who do not know me that well, that my very first job in Chicago, when I moved to Chicago as a very young and idealistic man, I'm still idealistic, uh, yeah, not, not that old. <laughs> don't stop, Doc, don't stop, don't stop. Just not that young, but my first job in Chicago was at the Instituto del Progreso Latino as, a, as an English teacher back in a particularly interesting period uh, back in the 80s. Uh, that there was a lot of a lot of movement at the yeah. Instituto that was a part, a very enlightening uh, for me to work there at the time. Of course, my colleague to my left, Susana, and I are part of the Chicago Bilingual Nursing Consortium Board, and uh, we've been working together so much that I'm not even sure if I'm going to add anything today because it's almost like mm -hmm. it's the same ideas because we've been doing it together. And Senator Delgado is a good friend in Springfield that I've always said to many people, I feel like I'm going into class. I mean, he calls me doctor and educator, but when I go and visit with him, I both get a history about Illinois and the Senate, and also a lesson on how policy is done and uh, how it, it, it really works. Uh, not always how it should work, but how, <laughs> how, how it really works. So very happy to be here. And as mentioned, I'm the president of St. Augustine College, which is an institution, for those of you who are not that familiar, that's completely dedicated to serving the Latino community. By our mission statement, we were created with the purpose of serving the Latino community, and we have associate degrees and bachelor's degrees. Uh, and we actually have one degree in the healthcare area that's a respiratory therapy degree that's very successful. Um, many, many Latinos are complete, completing that program. And we have a 100% passing rate in the NBRC, which is the external exam uh, necessary in order to become a therapist in, 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 in Illinois, and a wonderful program. But also, I'm very proud of the work that we do with Susana and many other people I see here in the Chicago Bilingual Nursing Consortium, uh, which as uh, mentioned I'm at the mission statement, our goal is to help a population that many people don't know exists, but it's truly here, which is internationally trained nurses. Men, not all, but many of them uh, Latinas that uh, were trained in another country and cannot, and are very knowledgeable and cannot perform uh, their jobs in Chicago, in the United States, because they don't have the license to practice here. And you find them doing other jobs and we're losing a lot of talent. And the goal of our organization is to provide the uh, learning, but it's more than that, it's the support necessary so that they can achieve uh, the goal of becoming a registered nurse in, in, uh, in Illinois. And it's uh, great work. And as, is from that background that I'm coming, from those uh, sort of two backgrounds of being the president of the college <coughs> and, um, and part of this board, that I thought that as an educator, there's a couple of things I could contribute to the conversation today. Uh, one is that I do believe I come to this conference every year, and it's a great opportunity to learn new things, uh, to meet with college colleagues, uh, to least listen to our legislators uh, uh, about what priorities are happening in Springfield and the challenges they're facing. But at the same time, I think this is an opportunity for those of us who have similar goals and similar causes to get together and come up with new innovative ideas, things we can take to the future. And as you suggested, Senator, what can you take that really it's policy and, and it requires? And um, we all know that in the healthcare field, we are underrepresented. Yes. Uh, we've heard some statistics, we don't need to repeat them. We're represented at all levels. And we all know also that. Uh, 
we need participation from our community at all levels. And it's, we've heard many wonderful programs and many wonderful examples of uh, uh, different pathways that you can go into health care um, and funding sources. Uh, however, something that is a concern to some of us that we've expressed is that we really want everybody that goes into this field to meet their full potential. And although we know that not everybody will go to college and get a nursing degree, some people will work very well at other levels, we need more people going to college and getting a nursing degree. 3%, you said? 3%. 3, 3. 3. 3. It's, not, it's not enough. No. We're not sufficiently represented. And what we've seen in our experience uh, uh, at the Chicago Bilingual Nursing Consortium and, and St. Augustine College, I guess, is that there is a community out there that really wants to enter this field. We know it both from the internationally trained nurses as well as from our community, from Little Village, from Humboldt Park to all our neighborhoods. There's people that really want to work in this field, but they find uh, barriers. We see that there are barriers. Susanna mentioned a little bit of how difficult it was for her to move forward and get her degree, but she had something um, that I think it's a point that we need to build on and it's the work that we need to do together. She had resilience to get it done. And, and I'm sure there were barriers along the way that were tremendous, but she had the resilience to overcome them step by step. And what we need to create are the spaces to help tap into that resilience that exists in our community in order to achieve their goals. Uh, in a way, I sort of, uh, what one of the things that we would like to propose is that we understand that the population we serve as educators has financial barriers to attend uh, college or other training programs. And they have a variety of other barriers that are often intangibles that are a little harder to explain in terms of their needs to meet, uh, to, to, to meet family needs, to be uh, with their families. The background education that perhaps was not the best coming from some of our school systems and so on that create these barriers that requires a lot of resilience. And the concept I wanted to present, and maybe many of you are familiar with it, but is that we all talk about capital and that we need capital in order to be successful. But what's been very fashionable in academic environments for the past 10 or 15 years is to move beyond talking just about economic capital and needing money in order to achieve things, but is the concept of social and cultural ca capital and how elite groups really acquire that from birth and can access many of our educational systems uh, that we've created um, and many in our community cannot do that. And that's what we need to change. The goal is that perhaps we can think that it is true that many of us did not grow up in environments where we received the social and cultural capital to enter into uh, an institution of higher education, but that does not mean we're destined to not do it. It just means that we have, we have other, in our community, we have other forms of capital. We have resilience. We have communication skills. We have aspirational capital that we want to advance as a community. And we need to tap into um, those forces that exist in the Latino community, in Pilsen, in Little Village, in uh, other neighborhoods, tap into that to make sure that everybody who wants to enter into the health field and the nursing career can reach, and I guess it applies to the medical field too, to become doctors mm -hmm. also, they can reach the, the, uh, the highest goal they have to the best availability and that we create all the systems uh, around us to make sure that they have the financial support, the academic support, the cultural support, all the support necessary to assure that the best people in our neighborhoods will achieve and we can move uh, to higher numbers than just 3%. So one of uh, our goals is that I would like to challenge uh, all of us in, in our community, everybody present here, that we need to be working as a unit to create a space that anybody in Chicago that believes they want to enter into this wonderful field of helping others be healthy 
uh, they know where to go and that we are all working together as a unit and it doesn't matter what level of education you have, what level of income, background education, how well you speak the English language or not if you're an immigrant, that you know there's a place that you, we can all come together uh, and uh, a place where you know you will be taken care of and you will find the best support so that it doesn't take, as Susana was saying, it doesn't take uh, 20 years to, to achieve a degree. It perhaps will take a little while to get it done, but you're in a supportive environment that's going to make it happen. And there's many good uh, initiatives that, has, that have happened in the Chicagoland area. Um, Juan just mentioned Carreras en Salud as an excellent example. Uh, but we need to multiply those by 10, by 20, by 30 to achieve the levels that we need. Or we'll continue to be part of the, what is it, the menu? That's right. <laughs> the menu instead of at the table. So, so in that sense, that's the call that I would like to take from all of us today, that we all represent different organizations, funding sources, but we need to come together as a unit to create a pathway where we can assure that everybody can achieve their top, their top potential and become um, CNAs, if that's, that's where, right. where their goal is, but become practice, uh, BSNs, if that's where their goal is become doctors and that's where their goal is and they can all uh, our community can participate fully in the healthcare field and that's dr. Andrew Sung and he has a couple bricks and mortars right in my district great colleges and that's a great place everyone can convene I'm sure and hey, I'm taking the liberty to invite everyone there because there that's exactly a great concept to close with ladies and gentlemen this is the panel of the 2014 committee here Julio Rodriguez, Elba Randasu, Juan Salgado, Susana Gonzalez, and Yu Sung, and your server, Legislator William Delgado. And now it's your turn. We have about 15 minutes or so until I think the lunch is about noon. We got a half hour actually. And we're going to utilize it. So please go address the microphone and feel free to uh, uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy it and, and give us your question, comment. Um, and again, uh, we pray that. Not only keeping in mind 3.6%, I think in funding mechanisms, we're 17% of the state, but we don't see 17% of dollars coming through, and that is a big problem. Carmen Velasquez. Um, good morning. Uh, with the announcement of the president yesterday, um, he opened up the door for the professional uh, undocumented pers person, but I fear for that person who is a nerd, and I say that respectfully. I don't say that disrespectfully. But we're talking about the people who are the undocumented who come from all over Latin America, Mexico, to come and be a nurse. And so I think we really have to look at what the Chicago Bilingual Nurse Consortium wants to do. We want to do a nurse institute. I want to do what you said, Juan. Mm -hmm. We don't want roadblocks. Tell me how to break the damn robots. I don't want you to tell me I have to do this and this and this. What is it? What's going to open the door for me? What's going to open the door? What kind of support do I need? What kind of money can we receive so that we can make the Nurse Institute a reality? We will need the help of the Hispanic Latino Caucus to give us the money to do that. We need our space and we want to do, we don't want to make an, uh, another entity we want to say, let's put that nurse institute in San Agustin College. Why not? Let's make it our own. Because if we don't drive the car, somebody else is going to drive our car. And, and that's excellent. And keeping in mind, as we go to the next speaker real quickly, we need to do that. And, and if every legislator, and I'm, one of, I'm the veteran senior, I'm getting old, uh, legislator uh, that I found on the Northwest side and within the caucus, as I'm a founder of the Latino caucus, that w I will say first, any capital projects, every legislator, and a lot of us say we got to take it to this, my district and that district. Well, this is one we should say, let's carve a piece out of any future capital dollars and every member of the Latino caucus put it together for one purpose, and that should be for a Latino nursing center. Because as we try our best to get it in the medical district, when we build the core center, we want a Guadalupe Reyes center that we wanted with Ed Valor, and we still are waiting. So at what stage do we start to build institutions that reflect the work of all of us. So that's my commitment, and I'm on record. So let's see, quien da más. If I, if I could just comment uh, briefly. Uh, and, uh, 
I'd like to say that part of the concept that Carmen has mentioned